Good morning from Tinkerer's Paradise. This is Patty, the Tinkerer's wife, welcoming you to another beautiful day in Portland, Oregon, where it's sunny and windy and warmer than it's been, so we're, we're pretty happy about that. Things are starting to bloom. I saw the uh, Wanda Primrose blooming. We have daffodils blooming. Um, yeah, violets just started to bloom, and that'll be great because I can I can start harvesting those uh, for things I like to use them for, and so I'm pretty excited. So, what's blooming in your yard? Anyway, I wanted to show you this. I apologize, I cannot get this phone to turn around when it's on, when it's videotaping. But anyway, I wanted to show you just kind of my collection of winter sown things here. Um, some of these are not coming up yet and I'm not going to show you those like the oregano that'll take a little while. Edge shallot won't be long. Mixed chives won't be long. Chinese celery I don't know. I've never grown this before but I'm very excited to. Oops there it is. Has anybody ever grown this? They said I wasn't going to do this but here we are. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> Uh, the giant prig celeriac, I'm very excited about that because I love that stuff. It is so tasty. And if you have never grown it, you need to grow it. It has a long season, but let me tell you, it's expensive enough in the store. You really should grow it because it's really nice to have in your pantry. It stores for a long time. Uh, just a great root crop. It does have a mild celery flavor. I've got crimson forest bunching onions and I have kind of this red theme going on with the onion shallot allium group, the crimson forest, the red shallots here. I think I'm kind of in the, oh, we got the pink celery. Yeah, <laughs> you think? I'm getting like everything but green. Uh, I love color though, and my lettuces will attest to that. I've got the, the freckles lettuce. The Merlot, which is a beautiful dark red. The Butter Crunch, which is just a lovely green lettuce. Very soft. Um, Freckles is a romaine type, and it has like polka dots all over it. So it's kind of fun. Looks pretty in a salad. And then we've got Purple Lady Bok Choy and Golden Winter Choy. And let's see if we can get a peek in here to see. Where's the... i got to find the lid. I'm doing really good. Here we go. Get you in here. Ooh. See the two colors? Bright green and kind of a dusky purple, and that will get much darker. It's very pretty. There's lots of pictures online if you want to see that purple lady bok choy. And anthocyanins, that's the key word in all of the vegetal growing world right now. Everybody wants more of them because those are making things superfoods. Uh, we have red kale and dazzling blue kale in this. And dazzling blue kale has a um, really pretty color and it has a, a red flush in the, um, what do you want to say, the midrib and stuff like that. So it's, it's really pretty. But the red kale is a, is a dark purplish red, which is fun. So I, like, I really like that one too. There's not, I'm not going to show you inside because they kind of look like the the bok choy does. Uh, er, early purple sprouting broccoli, that's really a good one. And by the way, this one will winter over here in Portland uh, with a little protection. Uh, if we have a mild winter, it'll winter over no, no problem. Kales here are pretty much perennial. Racina calendula, I got this at Baker Creek. I'd never seen this variety before, so I was pretty excited. And it's doing really well. I'm probably going to be transplanting some of this stuff pretty soon. But anyway, these were planted... I'm trying to remember when I planted these. It wasn't very long ago. It was about a month ago, maybe. And they're doing pretty good. And they don't take up space in my house this way. I don't have my beds ready for them, so I can go ahead and grow them on in containers. Uh, some of these are going to go in these pretty purple containers back here. We had tomatoes here, but... They need to have something else put in them this year. Uh, we had a problem with some disease last year, and I never have had a problem, but we had a really funky 
funky summer. It was wet and then it was hotter than Hades. <laughs> and so they struggled. Um, I'm hoping it's better this year. Um, we're going to have like cucumbers and stuff grow on these things. This is one of those El Cheapo wedding arches. And let me tell you, a can of spray paint, doesn't that just really make it look nice? And you can, if you want to do matchy-matchy, you can. <laughs> I'm not really a matchy-matchy person, but I do like that color of purple. And with the green plants on it, it isn't quite as bad. <laughs> anyway, I've got, um, oh, I want to show you this plant. I love herbs, and I know a lot about them, so you'll see me nerding out on herbs. This is Golden Rain. Uh, rosemary. It was um, discovered by Thomas de Baggio and the real name of it is Joyce de Baggio. That's after his wife. And it's one of the hardy, hardier varieties here in Portland. Um, yeah, so it's really a nice one and I like it because see how many leaves there are on the stems of this versus this is Arp Rosemary and that looks that looks pretty pretty pale and can you know but anyway arp was previously supposed to be one of the better types here so yeah um, this is scented geranium and let's see if there's any sprouts down here no not yet maybe pretty soon it will come up from the ground. Um, that was Grey Lady Plymouth. It will come up green and maybe I'll get lucky and have the variegation of Grey Lady Plymouth. I love that scented geranium. It is so pretty. And let me tell you, you want somebody to think you're a real she-she designer when it comes to desserts, just make brownies or something like that and then add like a violet or a scented geranium leaf or a mint leaves or something. Um, just very simple decoration and people think that you are like the coolest baker in the world <laughs> it's funny but you know we eat with our eyes so it's really really kind of a cool thing um this little cypress smells like lemon it is really not useful except for visual and the fragrance but i love it it's been in that pot for about three years now and this year i think we're going to put it in something else it will get quite large if i put it in the ground i really don't want it to do that this is one of my favorite plants. This is a, a, a prostrate rosemary, and I cannot remember the name of it, um, but it's very, very pretty and very blue flowers. I uh, should find out what the name of it is, and when I do, I'll put it in the comments. But I've just got it in a drainage pipe. That's a cement drainage pipe. And so you know, things like lavenders and rosemaries and uh, sage and any of the Mediterranean type herbs, these sub shrub herbs that we've got, um, they love the alkalinity of the cement. So plant things next to a sidewalk or in drainage tubes or in concrete vases, those kind of things, they love it. So, more herbs. Yes, I've got more herbs. Of course I have more herbs. Here's a little, here's a little myrtle. This is sweet myrtle. And you can use this for sauces. I just really like the plant. This one wants to grow sideways. I've got to figure out why. <laughs> I've never seen him do that. I bought the start looking a little sideways and it never went up. So we'll see. But anyhow, um, it's in a blue pot. You'll notice a lot of stuff in blue pots here. Cobalt blue is great with plants. A little surprise I had here this year. I want to go over here. This is a Chilean glory vine. And this one is pink champagne. It throws some very pretty pink flowers with a little bright yellow. And the hummingbirds love it. And it will get clear up to the top and come down over this. So it's very nice. Not a huge vine, at least not here. Maybe it will be this year now that it's established. I've got Palace Castle um, Artemisia. This is one of my favorites. It does not run like most of the other Artemisias do. Uh, it's very leggy this time of year. I'm waiting for it to start growing a little bit more in the center and then I will cut it back hard and it will grow up real nice. This, in case you're wondering, um, this is Millium Effusium Arium and this is 
these were seedlings that I planted in here and this is what they do and later in the summer they'll produce these big long flower heads that will get seeds on them and they're really easy to gather they don't self sow a lot when you gather them but they're they're pretty nice these are my tree kales or excuse me my tree collards I better get on this side of them Let's see if we can get them in the shade to get better color in the shade there we go uh, these guys um, came to me I bought them as unrooted cuttings and they're pretty well rooted now and they've been growing and you can see the beautiful chartreuse and purple and, and blue green color and these can get six to seven feet high and they're hardy here in zone 8b so I'm excited about those um, my little pagoda ilex pagoda and this is in a container and this um, whorehound here has been growing at the foot of it for three years and doing just fine so it's it's pretty hardy and this the uh, pagoda hasn't been bothered by it I also have little um, emerald tiara hostas here it's a little dwarf hosta so that will come up later and then over here I've got a napita and it's a small napita. It was a seedling actually that just came up and I never dug it out. Um, one of these days I will redo this and probably separate everything. And, and re this probably needs to be repotted because you can see how far down this soil has, has gone. And I've even added compost to it. So let's get back to the herbs. I wanted to show you this. This is, there's, uh, you'll see a lot of different kinds of culinary sage in the nurseries. Um, this is your standard culinary sage and you can see how small those leaves are. And then over here, and these are not as big as they normally get, this is Burgarten sage. And they get much bigger. They'll get like four times this size. They're huge. These are really good to grow, uh, to hang up and dry. Um, just make sure you put them in a place that doesn't get direct sunlight and is cool and has some ventilation that's all you need and you can dry your own herbs it's very simple there's no big science to it other than that um, the heat and the light degrade the oils in them but once you dry your own herbs you'll never go back to buying bottled stuff this is hardy marjoram it's sweeter than oregano but both of them are actually oregano's they're in they're oregano by genus um, but their species separates them, and that's why that's marjoram and oregano is oregano, and oregano is a lot more peppery. We have a, um, let me see, this is a, oh yeah, this is a citrus thyme here. I think I've got another one over here. I don't remember the name of this thyme. This one I know, uh, it looks all ruddy right now. You can see it there. That is one of the few very hardy lemon thymes you'll ever find in the Portland area. Um, it is Dune Valley thyme and it has a beautiful bright yellow and dark green variegated leaves. Yeah, so it's, it's really nice. And it looks like uh, somebody isn't up yet this morning. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Um, I got this this little garden lady um, at a really steal of a deal. She was brand new at a local liquidation center, so I got her for like a fifth of what she normally would have cost, so I had to bring her home. I'm going to paint her hopefully this year, and we'll, we'll put her up. That'll be pretty fun. Anyway, I, like I said, goofy, right? <laughs> so the bright yellow-leaved shrub here in the blue container, this is... Uh, golden, oh, come on, Culinary Bay, Sweet Bay, Loris Nobilis. I was, yeah, me and my, I got to just say the Latin name, and then I can remember the common name, I guess. But anyway, um, these grow to be trees here. I mean, they're like the standard laurel shrubs. They want to be 60 feet tall, literally. Yeah, so a few years ago, Andy Van Hevelingen, one of our herb growers here in the Portland area, He's actually in Newburg. Oops, I just about fell down. Um, I'm out here in my slippers. 
and it's dry out here so I can get away with that. Anyway, he discovered a, a standard bay in a woman's yard in Newburgh area that was 60 feet tall she'd had there for years. And he went, oh, I didn't think those were supposed to be hardy here. This is how we find out, right? So I'm really glad that we know now. I want to show you this. Uh, this is catnip. It has a much different leaf than that little cat mint that I showed you over there. See the point on it? Uh, put it in a place where the cats can't really destroy it. They can't pull it up from the root, which they will do, by the way. And then around it, I've got some fever few, some containers of things I'm wintering over because you've got to have some place besides on the ground to put containers or they get run over by the husband. Um, we have Mitchum's Black Peppermint. This is one of my favorite, favorite mints. I know there's a lot of new ones on the market, but next to Spearmint, this is one that I can't live without. It is sweet. It's a nice sweet peppermint. So you can put it in a melon salad um, with oranges and all of that. Anyway, aside from that, let's see, what else do we have here? We have chives, standard chives, and we've got, these are garlic chives. And garlic chives, you can tell because of the flat leaves. And they'll produce this big, long stalk, and they have these very pretty white flowers, which obviously are not on them right now. Yeah, I'm trying to focus this thing again. Anyway, um, we'll show you that when it's up and running. I have a couple carnations in there. Um, room for something else. Oh, yeah, that's always fun when you've got an empty spot. Well, let me show you one more thing. This is Salvia officinalis tricolor. And there is an annual that they call tricolor sage that is not this. It's not edible. It's tricolor because it has three different colors of flowers. You want officinalis tricolor. This is a culinary sage. It's a weaker grower than its um, two brothers over there I showed you. But it's really worth having because it's got this beautiful variegation. Yeah. And there's also um, a purple culinary sage and golden variegated culinary sage. I really need a name for her. What do you think I should call her? Looking for names. <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of what's going on here. See how tall our trees are? This is what we live under. Yep. I love watching them dance in the wind. They are so gorgeous when they're dancing in the wind. But they're quite messy. Anybody that has a maple tree that wants to tell me they hate their maples because they're messy and wants, ever wants fir trees, I just laugh. Yep, and this is like the second or third round since last December of picking up things. It's just nonstop. So I'm not gonna end this with a complaint though because we're happy to have the shade they do provide beautiful shade for us. Anyway, I just I just wanted to share what's going on here. There's more I could share, and I will later, because there's a whole host of things going on here all the time. That's why it's Tinkerer's Paradise. <laughs> so y'all have a good day. This is the Tinkerer's Wife, signing off. God bless.